Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Ball Matrix here for the Chosen Prime, and today we are taking a look at DX9 Gabriel. And we're also looking at a little bit of the mess that is my recording studio, because quite frankly, this figure is absolutely enormous. From this end, at the end of the track, all the way to the other end of the track, it is 43 inches long. And from this part on the side to the same part on the other side, it is 24 inches wide. It then also stands 16 inches tall at the top of the rocket. The whole set is absolutely enormous, and this is just base mode. Wait till we get to robot mode. I realize saying that the set is massive doesn't really give you guys a good idea on the actual size of it. It's, it's just too big for words, in all honesty. It really is that big. MP10 Prime is, by himself, dwarfed simply by the rocket. Wait until you see how he compares to the fully combined mode. And then a Titan's Returns figure is just about the right size to look like it's walking into the rocket. It's, the set is just huge. And again, the rocket alone dwarfs many figures, including Titan's Returns Deluxe class figures. The rocket and the tank do not actually connect to the rest of the base mode in any way. They are kind of freestanding and on their own. The actual tank is, as you can see, very large and is, well, it can be pretty much stood on and ridden by multiple deluxe class figures at the same time. The tank mode has a couple of little gimmicks to it, the first of which are the front cannons that can elevate up and down. The main turret spins 360 degrees and has a long or wide range of motion. And then in the back, where the robot face would be, is this little command control center that, the, that can be accessed by opening up that little visor right there. It also has a little flap up front that you can flip out this yellow compartment which this section appeared in one of the Transformers episodes from the original G1 cartoon. I don't remember which one exactly. Then the rocket itself is also big and can be posed different ways thanks to the claws being fully articulated. And this nice little ramp section then folds up and slides up into place inside the rocket nicely. And then you have just the rocket shooting through space as it's supposed to. Though, as you can surmise, the entire base section is not going to fit inside this rocket. It's, that's just not going to happen. We're going to go ahead and walk through the transformation because it's an interesting transformation that I think you should see fully. And I apologize if the lighting isn't perfect. I've done the best I can for a figure of this size. So to start off with, we're going to take the rocket, simply split it apart, then reach inside and pull out the upper elbow section which is actually a lot harder said than done. I normally end up having to reach for either a spudger, a putty knife, or just something to lever it, get in here and leverage these components out. They do snap into place, but the connector or the pin in there is not very tight. I'm, hope, I'm also hoping not marring any of the plastic at all. It's not easy. Oh, one other thing. Both of these components have LEDs in them. The LEDs do not work on this loner unit that I've received. And I think you're supposed to unscrew the tips and then unscrew this section here where the claws are, but it's not coming off and I don't want to break it. It's just me being very careful. So we'll take the lower arms and put them off to the side, grab the tank, and the tank transformation is probably my favorite part push the yellow guns in and just be wary with the yellow guns because they are very tight to get in and out. Then we can come to the underside of the treads. First grab the wheels here, unpeg them, fold up that piece. Once this is folded out and kind of out of the way, we can then come to the middle of the treads, un unpeg them, fold them all the way out, come to the back, flip that all the way up, take the rear treads, fold them in until they just stop. Then take the center treads and first come to the white sections that are connecting them together and then grab them and fold them all the way in to the inside 
and just kind of work on flattening them out like that. Just fold them up like an accordion until they snap into place. Then the front tread sections will fold out like that. We can move this up out of the way and then push the front treads up, which will bring this section up with them. And just snap that into place. Leave these front treaded sections folded out. And you can fold up the back section like that. I prefer to leave it down. Grab the entire top section of the tank mode, fold it down, flip these white sections all the way around before you do that, like that, and then peg them into place at the top or with the bottom middle tread sections. Finally, for the face, we can lift up the clear plexiglass or just leave it, flip up this little peg it's at the top, and then that peg will twist the command section around, revealing the face of Gabriel. And turn the whole thing around, and this section is ready to go. We'll plop this down into the body when we are done. Now we're going to get rid of all of these bits, move them over to my other table, and come to the base section itself. First, get in the way of the camera with my hoodie on because it's cold. Take these yellow sections, fold up the panels there, and then put them off to the side. We will need them later. Next, come to the outriggers, or tracks, I should say. Unpeg them from the body, take these first sections of the tracks, fold them up underneath, and then the entire tracks will sandwich together. But first, we want to flip out these little connectors on the one side, because if we don't, they won't hold together correctly. And Again, flipping just these little connectors out is a pain in the butt. When you're all done, it should look like this, hold together pretty well, and then we will attach this onto his back when we are in the robot mode. And again, put those off to the side. Now we come to the main base mode, and this is where things are gonna get kind of crazy. So to start off with, what I like to do is take the entire base mode, lift it up, and kind of flip it upside down. It just makes things easier to work on. So we've got it flipped upside down. What we're going to do is first come to the edges and these edges will collapse and fold up underneath these bigger pieces here. And trust me, this is easier doing it this way than it is any other way simply because the figure is so big and that's that's the primary reason why I'm doing it this way. Now that those sections are folded up correctly, we can then come to the center section and unpeg these pegs, fold them up and straighten them out and then peg them in together. So we do that, come to one of the sides, flip up this panel, and that will allow you to turn the foot 180 degrees like that. That'll free up this cavity that's right there. You will fold that, you will then fold this entire leg section up and then turn it one at the ankle and then twist it around and then collapse the leg section onto itself and then drop the foot, rear foot panel down. And then that's it. We'll move on to the next leg and grab one of these yellow pieces, which will snap in and then slide down and lock the entire shin section into place. Now with the entire section correctly assembled, one thing you do have to be aware of is it's very easy to point the feet and the front shins the wrong way. So we'll just flip the whole unit over like that and continue on with the transformation. All right, so now we've got it stood up we take the entire section in the back, unpeg that section, and then flip the whole section forward like that and drop down the side skirts, the front armor skirts, and the butt skirts. Fold up these yellow pieces that will form the upper shoulders and then push rapidly to unpeg this entire plate from the bottom plate. It's, ah. Uh, now we can then grab, come in and grab the shoulders, open them up and fold them out and rotate them into place 
as the shoulders. I'm gonna leave the other one as is so I can show you how the arms form. And here is where we will take the entire torso. There are two peg holes here. They will snap into those bits there. Then these connector ports will actually plug into the sides here. And then there are ports on the side of the chest where the shoulders will plug in. Oh, and then there are these connector bits back here, which will peg into these sections. This is actually probably the most annoying part of the transformation because things don't always snap into place where you want them. And stuff has a tendency to flop around a little bit. And if you don't get everything perfectly lined up, it won't stay together. Now there are two other connector ports here that will be taken care of by the shoulder bits that fold down and snap into place. All right, next, we are gonna turn the figure around and connect the back sections. There are peg holes on either side. They just peg in right there and then right there. And then the whole unit folds down and pegs into place. And that peg, that final pegging into place of the backpack section is very tenuous. So it doesn't really wanna line up all that well. I find I have to just get my fingers up in here and push up a little bit until it snaps into place. It does pop off though very easily. So now we're gonna to come to the arms. And the arms are a little bit iffy with the transfer, with the merging. So I'm gonna zoom in here real quick just to show you guys. You see this panel right here? This gets pushed in and then you slide the arm into place and it's held in by tension. There's a pretty strong spring in there, but not strong enough because there's nothing locking in the arm once you get it in place. So we're going to go ahead and put it in like that. This is the elbow and the elbow bends this way. Oh, sorry, I had that completely out of the way. So we're gonna go ahead and put the blaster arm first. That's normally his, right, his left arm and you can see the elbow there. So we'll go ahead and push that section in, get it lined up and pushed it in and push it in. But there's not a lot of tension here. You can pull it out pretty easily. So just be wary of that if you get the figure. And then we'll go ahead and get the other arm and finish up the review with the robot mode. Gabriel's robot mode is absolutely massive, standing at least 24 inches tall. It is head to head with Metroplex, uh, Generations Metroplex, that is. It is an absolutely beautiful figure, reminding me of exactly what I always thought Omega, an Omega Supreme toy should look like. The head sculpt is nearly cartoon perfect, and the overall look of it is just imposing. This is a big boy. This is a very big boy, and I like this one a lot more than the Fan Toys version. Now, I've not been able to transform said Fan Toys version. I've only been able to hold it in person at TFCon 2017 in Virginia. So I never have gotten a hold of the figure to actually transform it. Though, from what I've heard, its transformation is much more involved and much more complex than what we see with Gabriel. To give you guys an idea on the scale, on the left we have the completed Megazord from the 2017 Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, and on the right we have Generations Titans Met Class Metroplex. And right down there, the very bottom of the frame, is MP10 Optimus Prime. Sporting over 20 points of articulation, Gabriel is actually incredibly poseable, but he is exceptionally bulky and very, very top heavy. So that needs to be taken into account. You can pull off some decent poses, but all of the joints on the lower legs are supporting at least four pounds worth of weight. And that's not in counting the arms, that's just the figure as a whole. Or that's just the tor that's just the torso as a whole. So it's not light, but as I said, you can pull off some decent poses. The DX9 Gabriel is currently available at the Chosen Prime store. The current price at the time of recording is $279.99. The figure I think is worth it, but if you're a fan of fan toys, I would go ahead and go online and check out other reviews of the Fan Toys version of this figure as well, and then come back to this review and just compare and contrast which one you think it would be better for your 
collection. I can tell you from other pictures that I have seen is the figure, this figure is roughly the same size as the fan toys version of Omega Supreme. So do bear that in mind when you're considering a purchase. Please hit that like button. It helps us grow the channel and give us a subscribe if you enjoyed the content. As always, I am Balt Matrix for The Chosen Prime and thank you so much for watching.